Hello everyone. Today in this physiology video lecture class, we shall try to understand the process of osmoregulation and also its mechanisms. Now, what is osmoregulation? Just simply to say, it is a method of maintaining body fluid concentration with respect to that of the surroundings. Now, different animals, like there are aquatic animals, terrestrial animals, every time they are in an environment which may be more concentrated or less concentrated than their body fluid concentration. Now, basically, we all know very well that between two differently concentrated fluids, one higher concentration and one lower concentration, there is always movement of ions or movement of water molecules. This process of movement of water molecules is what is known as osmosis. We all know regarding this. From there, the word osmo is uh, derived. Okay. So this movement of water from higher concentration to a lower concentration it is been there in all the animals, especially in aquatic animals, and animals need to regulate this. Okay, so some of the animals may be present in an habitat where it may be more concentrated than their body fluids, and some animals may be present in an environment where it may be less concentrated than their body fluids. As a result, what happens? They need to have some mechanisms to get adjusted to that habitat. Okay, it is not that only aquatic animals have this problem. Even the terrestrial animals, they too have a problem of uh, water loss, dehydration, because they live in an arid environment. Always, their body is hydrated, and they live in an arid environment. Okay, so with the, uh, all this situational uh, background habitat uh, difficulties let us see how exactly animals cope with this okay so let us get started now so in the as i have told in the previous slide what is osmoregulation it is maintenance of the body fluid concentration ultimately it is the water and salt concentration of the body it has to be maintained cannot be keep on fluctuating so how the animals maintain their body fluids concentration let us see now what is the main importance of osmoregulation it helps in maintaining the osmotic pressure of the blood and tissue to its concentration okay so this is important and that is why there are different mechanisms developed by different animals like freshwater animals marine animals and terrestrial animals, they have developed different types of um, mechanisms in order to maintain the body fluid concentration. Now, as I have told you before, some animals live in environment where which is less concentrated than their body fluids. As such animals, for example, the freshwater animals, they live in a very dilute water. Such animals, they face the problem of hydration, correct? lot of water enters into their body they have a problem with the excess water entering their body and they need to manage the water levels in the body osmotic pressure of the body fluids has to be maintained because due to the consistent entry of the water they are facing the problem of hydration now what about the marine animals the animals that are living in marine environment they face the problem of dehydration because the surrounding fluids are highly concentrated due to the um, presence of excessive salts. This highly concentrated uh, fluids, uh, due to that, lot of water is lost from the marine animal's body. Uh, so, and we use the term exosmosis for that. Okay, so here we use the term exosmosis for loss of water from the body. And we use the term endosmosis here. Endosmosis for entry of lot of water into the body. So the freshwater animals face the problem of hydration due to endosmosis, entry of excess water into the body. And the marine animals face the problem of dehydration due to 
exosmosis. Now, these animals have to have some mechanisms to cope with this problem. Okay. Now, let us see what are these mechanisms. In this picture, you can see um, there is a marine fish and there is a freshwater fish which are performing different activities in order to maintain their body fluid concentration. Now, if you look at the freshwater animal, it is present in a dilute water. So that means it is hypotonic water compared to the body fluid concentration here, the environment in which they are present, it is less concentrated. There is more water here in the environment in which they are living. A lot of water is present and here in the body, a lot of salts are present. It is hypertonic. As a result, the water starts moving into the fish body. Now, this fish, which is living in fresh water form, fresh water has a problem of hydration. So it has a problem of hydration. And regarding the marine animal, it is present in an uh, environment which is hypertonic. That means there are more salts in the surrounding environment than the there are more salts in the surrounding environment than the body fluids of the animals okay as a result this is hypertonic this is hypotonic water starts moving out from the body of the animal into the environment into the marine water so the fish starts losing a lot of water that is why the marine animals face a problem of dehydration okay now the freshwater animals has a problem of hydration and the marine animals have a problem of dehydration. Now, they need to be mechanisms in order to face this problem. Now, basically, the freshwater animals, due to the entry of a lot of water into their body, they excrete the excessive water present in their body into the environment actively why this active procedure is required, why this process should be active, because they are exporting the water against the concentration gradient. So remember students, it is always easy for the movement of water molecules from their higher concentration to lower concentration. So it occurs passively. But in case of situation where the animal has to excrete or produce remove the excessive water that is present in their body into the surrounding environment it needs energy okay so actively remove the water from the body and at the same time they do produce a dilute urine very very dilute urine is produced and when they are producing dilute urine they may face a problem of loss of salts so for that reason these animals they efficiently reabsorb the salt molecules when they are producing the urine. Ultimately, they will be having very, very dilute urine. Now, what about the marine animals? Now, in case of marine animals, they are facing the problem of dehydration. A lot of water is lost from the body of the animal. As a result, in order to compensate this loss, the marine animals drink a lot of water, drink a lot of seawater, now, along with the sea water, there is entry of salts also. A lot of salts are entering into the body. Now, they conserve the water. At the same time, they has to excrete a lot of salts that are entering into the body. They have to excrete the excessive salts that are present in the body. Okay. Now, this will be again done through an active process. Their salt secreting cells and these salt secreting cells present in the gills they excrete the excess of salts that are present in the body. Not only that, the fish also produce a highly concentrated urine, which is consisting of different ions in order to remove the excessive salt from the body. Okay. And 
apart from this there are very special mechanisms in some cases like uh, hagfish the hagfishes they are isoosmotic so they are always uh, maintain their body fluid concentration in constant to that of the surrounding environment in that case there is no need for all these mechanisms because it is isoosmotic now in there are some animals like elasmobranchs like sharks they have a special mechanism where they'll have a special salt here in the body they have a special salt inside the body as a result due to the presence of this salt the body of the animal is becoming hypertonic okay so in some special fish due to the presence of a special salt the body of the animal itself is hypertonic to the sea water as a result it won't face the problem of dehydration okay so there is a special salt and this salt is urea along with what is known as trimethyl amine oxide okay so in order to detoxify this urea that is present in the body there is also addition of what is known as trimethylamine oxide and these two components when they are present inside the body of these plasmobranchs and ultimately their body fluid concentration becomes hypertonic as a result they won't face the problem of dehydration this is how the marine forms uh, maintain their body fluid concentration with this brief uh, explanation let us move on what slides we have so based on whether the animal tries to maintain the osmoregulation or it tries to get adjusted to the surrounding. There are two groups uh, so surrounding medium concentration. We have classified the animals into two groups, osmoregulators and osmoconformers. Okay. Now, uh, please do not mind regarding this box. Uh, osmoconformers. Now, what they do, they always try to maintain their body fluid concentration similar to that of the surrounding um, medium. So they always try to be isoosmotic with that of the surrounding medium. So that is possible only by living, the, these fish live in an environment where the habitat where they are living, the fluids that in which they are living are isoosmotic to their body. In specific regions of the world, we do see these fish being present where there is uh, the um, water or the habitat which is having the fluid concentration which is equal to their body. In that case, the animals need not struggle for osmo regulation. Okay. Then the, the next group of uh, organisms are osmo regulators. Okay. And these osmo regulators have to have many mechanisms to maintain their body fluid concentration. This osmo regulation. Let us see in freshwater animals, marine water animals, and in terrestrial animals. If you look at the uh, osmoregulators, there are hyperosmotic uh, forms where they need to maintain their body fluid concentration above the surrounding medium. So, example, octopus, which is hyperosmotic. In hyperosmotic animals, they need to maintain their body fluid concentrations above the surrounding medium. In hypoosmotic organisms, they need to maintain their body fluid concentration below the surrounding medium. Example, brain shim, that is Artemia slime. Now, another two terms we come across in osmoregulation is purihaline and sphenohaline. Remember, students, there are fish which have the ability to get adjusted to the fluctuations in the uh, surrounding uh, medium fluid concentration some fish they get adjusted to wide range of changes in salinity they have the ability to get adjusted to the wide range of salinity changes so such organisms are called urihaline and there are animals which can only adjust to uh, small changes in the body in the surrounding medium concentration uh, they are known as uh, the stenohaline animals. Now in this table I have listed out the osmoregulatory structures in different animals like the aquatic forms here you can see and the respective uh, structures are 
present here we shall discuss how they are useful to these animals now if you look at the osmoregulation in uh, freshwater ponds as i have told you already they always face the problem of hydration that means uh, their body is hypertonic and the surrounding medium is dilute okay so hypotonic so surrounding medium is hypotonic and the body fluids are hypertonic as a result water enters into their body and they face the problem of hydration and all these freshwater forms have different structures to excrete the dilute urine and remove the excessive water so for example in protozoans there is a diffusion of excessive water and in case of freshwater crayfish we do have what are known as antennal glands which help in absorbing salts and produce dilute urine so the production of dilute urine is to remove excessive salts and in freshwater amphibians the skin plays an important role in osmoregulation okay now the skin is always hydrated and they produce lot of dilute urine and when they are losing excessive water from the body the skin helps in retaining salts from the uh, salts inside the body so that means the skin avoids loss of salts now as we have discussed before in marine forms there is a problem of dehydration because they live in a water which is hypertonic and this i have already told you in hagfish there is isotonic situation and there are some marine forms which i have uh, listed here you can see the marine forms uh, for example like marine arthropods have antennal glands and gills these antennal glands helps in eliminating the excessive water so as i have told you before the marine forms have the problem with salt excessive salt that is present in their body and these antennal glands help in removal of the excessive salts and there are also gills present in some of the arthropods which help in absorption of salts now there are uh, the, uh, there is a salt water crab eating frog this frog lives in mangroves maintain osmoregulation by retaining urea remember i told you there are some animals which retain salt in their body such that their body fluids become hypertonic so that they won't face the problem of dehydration now in marine reptiles and birds they drink lot of water drinking behavior we see in them and there is salt secreting cells excessive salts that come out are excreted out turtles there are salt glands in the supraorbital region they produce salty tears to eliminate the excessive salts and in higher vertebrates the mammals there are efficient kidneys that are present the kidney kidneys excrete the excessive salts that are entering into the body and they produce a very very concentrated urine as a result they will be able to cope with their uh, hypertonic medium and in case of terrestrial forms it is always dehydration problem and they one way they drink a lot of water and other way they prevent the loss of water the loss of water is through lungs it is through skin it is through excretion it is through digestion all these ways water is lost from their body they have different mechanisms now, for example like by having moist skin or some of them have chitinous field you can refer to the uh, animals in which this is seen for example the snails and frogs there is moist skin insects and arachnids there is chitinous cuticle which is impermeable to the water and frogs they uh, frequently when they get dehydrated they frequently enter into the water and reptiles uh, their skin is very tough or dermal scale epidermal scales are present dry skin they have this avoids um, evaporation of water from their body and birds they have feathers and scales which prevents the water loss even mammals they have efficient kidneys to avoid the uh, uh, water loss and water is maintained and even the skin plays a very important role in preventing the water loss from the body now let us take an example of a uri haline animal called as artemia salina the green shrimp so so artemia salina is a marine form it is uri haline we have discussed uri haline means 
so the tmes alina is it can get adjusted to the changes in the wide range of uh, salt concentration where it lives it lives in salt lakes and coastal evaporation ponds now like other marine animals the uh, brain shrimp is also living in a hypertonic condition now due to the presence of hypertonic condition there is excessive salt that is entering into the body now uh, it maintains the water balance by uh, by excreting water to retain salt now what happens when animal is present in brain so brain is a highly concentrated water with the salt sodium chloride and it regulates the ionic balance like any other hyperregulator hyperregulator means the marine animals when are animals which maintain their body fluid uh, concentration higher than the uh, surrounding water medium they consistently they have to excrete out excessive salts that are entering into their body even the brain shrimp plays the same role now um the brain shrimp because it is living in hypertonic medium it has to minimize the problem of exosmosis that is the excessive water that is getting lost from the body first of all the brain shrimp has a uh, brain shrimp this is a picture of a brain shrimp the brain shrimp has a thick cuticle on the body which prevents the water loss which is very less permeable to the water which one way prevents the water loss and also it excretes the, the salts excessive salts that are entering into the body through an active process and at the same time the brain shrimp also drinks a lot of salt water so to avoid the dehydration because it is there in hypertonic uh, habitat it has to or retain its water as a result it drinks a lot of water along with water lot of salts also enter but this these salts are removed by salt secreting cells and produce by producing concentrated urine now from gut water enters the hemolymph through the active process so when they drink water so water enters through it and excessive salts are removed and excessive salts are even are removed by salt secreting cells of the gills and through faces and by producing highly concentrated urine these are the mechanisms through which the brain shrimp uh, lives in a hypertonic medium now in freshwater animals as we have uh, discussed previously uh, hydration problem is there um, so in such animals there is a problem of entry of excess water they prevent this by having cycloid scales on their body which are impermeable to water and due to the excessive entry of the water they produce a lot of dilute urine and the kidneys help in production of highly dilute urine and kidneys are very efficient in reabsorbing the salts because salts are not there in the surrounding medium they have the challenge of retaining a lot of salts in their uh, body while producing the urine the salt reabsorption takes place in the kidneys and even the chloride cells that are present in the gills they help in reabsorption of the salts and in case of marine bony fishes uh, they have the uh, they live in hypertonic medium and so their challenge is entry of excessive salt so as a result they drink a lot of sea water and but here in marine kilios the kidneys are not very well uh, developed as a result they need to excrete the excessive salts that are entering into their body by producing uh, concentrated urine okay and the chloride secreting cells that are present in the gills they excrete uh, the excessive salts now in case of uh, elasmo grants they again uh, live in both fresh water and marine water so in fresh water the osmoregulation is similar to that of the fresh water helios in the previous slide we have uh, discussed in marine elasmobranchs they uh, live in an hypertonic uh, medium 
their plasma is hypotonic that means less concentrated to the medium in which uh, they are living so uh, there is uh, there is going to be consistent exosmosis of the water from the body into the surrounding medium so they need to avoid this uh, exosmosis process now for that reason uh, as i have told you they retain a special salt i told you so urea along with trimethyl amine oxide so to detoxify the salt that they retain in the body um, both of them they maintain the osmotic uh, pressure higher than the surrounding medium to avoid the entry of excessive salts and they do have what are known as rectal glands which eliminate the uh, excessive salt that is entering their body okay so students uh, so these are the different uh, mechanisms uh, through which different animals try to uh, uh, maintain their osmoregulation or try to maintain their body fluid concentration remove uh, mainly remember these points and few structures so fresh water forms have the problem of hydration they remove excessive water through producing dilute urine and also the uh, they have to retain a lot of salts while excreting the uh, excessive water from the body. And the marine forms have the problem of dehydration. There are different structures that uh, help in excreting the excessive salt that is entering their body. The, actively, they excrete out the salts, and there is um, special uh, structures that produce highly concentrated urine to remove the excessive salts, and some of them. Have special salts in their body to maintain hypertonic situation to avoid the excessive salts into the body. Okay, and marine forms have these structural uh, aspects to prevent the dehydration from the body. Okay, so uh, that's it. Thank you all for watching.